So for a scientist, open source hardware gives us the ability to make custom equipment to meet our exact needs. It allows us to have control over the equipment in our labs. So if a vendor goes out of business, or they lose key technical staff, or maybe discontinue a product, you're not left holding a paperweight, you're left uh, with the technology that you can build on. One of the most powerful things about open source hardware for scientific equipment is it allows you to tap into an international design community. You're obligated to share the results of your own hardware back with the community if you used open source hardware in your own lab. And when you do that, what you do is make small iterations that make better and better equipment for everyone. Uh, we found in our own lab that we've saved tens of thousands of dollars making all different kinds of equipment. Everything from simple things like the little test tube racks uh, to uh, devices that you can use to replace a complete centrifuge. Uh, in our own lab we do a lot of solar photovoltaic work, so much of our work is related to optics. And so even everything from simple mechanical pieces, uh, like this a lens holder, is now completely printable with open source 3D printers. So you download the design of the, the object off of the internet, uh, customize it to meet your specific needs, and then print it. And the, if you have the ability to do CAD or the ability to do the design, then you can make much more complicated objects. The simple mechanical objects that you can make with 3D printers are, are pretty useful, and uh, they certainly can reduce cost in your labs. So it's very easy to, to make a 3D printable, say, uh, test tube rack. So you can replace simple mechanical things within your, your lab. Uh, those mechanical things can be quite uh, substantial. So this is a Dremel Fuge chuck. You attach this to a Dremel drill, and then you replace the, the need for a microcentrifuge. Um, uh, things can get progressively more complicated. So let's say that you're interested in uh, physics optics. This is a magnetic base that we put together for our optical setups. And um, uh, attached here is a, a lens holder that, again, is completely printable. And it uses off-the-shelf um, M3 nuts and screws in order to hold it all together. It can be completely customized so that you can make it for, for square uh, say a filter holder, you can change the size of the lens, um, the thickness, uh, everything can be, can be exactly customized to your needs. So where things really start to, to heat up for a scientist is when you couple it with open source electronics. And so this is a simple Arduino open source microcontroller. And what that means is that the schematics, the firmware, the software, everything for it is, is shared freely on the internet. And thousands of people have begun to upload uh, different ways to improve the performance or the abilities of this microcontroller. And so, for instance, uh, we've used it in our lab to make a, an open source calorimeter uh, that we then turned into an open source nephilometer. So this is something that you can take out into the field and do water quality testing. Um, everything about it is printable and customizable, so you can change, for instance, the size of the cuvettes or the um, um, test tubes that you want to, to use, use it for. It is uh, completely upgradable and it has a, a small microcontroller like this on the inside of it. And so it, the code is free, the firmware is free, the physical designs are free. We've shown that in shootouts that it is just as reliable um, and accurate as something that you would buy off the shelf for a couple thousand dollars. And we can put this together for well under a hundred. And you can get more and more complicated and go after more and more expensive equipment. So this is a, an open source syringe pump. That's basically a linear actuator that we attach to a Raspberry Pi. Uh, syringe pumps go for thousands of dollars and you can get one that does anything that you want it for. So you can do everything from electro spinning to kind of blood transfusions or, or use it even for, for 3D printing itself. What it's doing is it's giving scientists the ability to replicate the work of our peers exactly because you can upload a digital design for this, an experiment that you want to do and, or you want others to do and then they can download it, they can try out your experiment and then they can modify it and make it better and better. So the reason that you want to share your designs in this, the open source scientific hardware community is because you'll get people working for you. We've had dozens of people from all over the world uh, provide us with advice examples, uh, small changes that have made our equipment better and run better to make our science better and our engineering better. Let's quickly go through the, the software tool chain for using open source uh, scientific hardware. And so you would go to a site over here on the right, uh, like Thingiverse, which uh, I currently maintain an open source scientific tool collection. And so there's hundreds and hundreds of scientific tools that have already been designed. And you can simply uh, either search by keyword or browse through things that you might be interested in. So for example, if you're interested in printing out a completely printable uh, optical microscope, you could do this. And so over here on the left, uh, you can see one of these pieces that you can e easily download uh, from the things. Uh, you pick the one that you, that you want, uh, download it, and then it's set up ready to print. 
So let's say that you're interested in something like this customizable lens holder, uh, like on the right. You can open it in Customizer, which is an application that allows you to make it exactly what you want. Uh, so let's say that the default thickness is you know 10 here, maybe you want it to be 12, and you want the, the lip size to be a little bit larger than the one uh, that that I designed for our lab, and so you can change all these things, or you can change the diameter of your lenses if you've got larger lenses. Uh, when you're done with that, you, you simply click on create the thing, and then that generates an STL. The STLs, then you can then open up in a, a slicing application where you take the exterior of the object, denoted by an STL type file, into G-code. And G-code is simply the instructions that tell the, the printer how uh, the head is supposed to move. And so here I'm, I'm opening up the G-code uh, for a specific type of uh, a microscope component. Uh, here it is over on the right. And what we're going to do is print it the same way that you would any, any other kind of normal two-dimensional file. The printer homes and then immediately begins to print your object. One layer at a time, building it up into a three-dimensional uh, object. And so really we're just at the, the beginning of the open source hardware movement for scientists, but it's pretty exciting. There's an exponential rise in the number of digital designs that are available on the web, and hundreds of scientific devices that can save your lab thousands of dollars are already available.